stretch your hands towards the basket. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you for the tithes, the offering, the alms, Lord. We thank you for the seed faith sown today, Lord God, in Jesus' name, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for just even releasing even great hope, expectation, revelation, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord God. And I thank you right now, Lord, that you're going to bless it and multiply it back to your people. Increase the fruits of their righteousness, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Make King too. All right. There we go. Woo. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. I wanted to speak to you today by a revelation that I received yesterday uh, on Saturday. A and this revelation is that the time of sorrows has ended. And the time of tribulation has begun. And evil is growing exponentially now. It's not just up and down a little bit, but a lot. It's coming on like a tidal wave. Every place you look, it's witchcraft. They're starting to celebrate Halloween in September now. They're, they're promoting witchcraft on almost every every me venue that they have. Has anybody else noticed that? When you, when you turn on the television, I have a cable system that I can look, and the only thing on there worth watching is a baseball game or a football game, as long as they don't have those mics turned on to the players because they're not exactly a sanctified vocabulary sometimes. But anyway... <laughs> Amen. So this growth in darkness is actually a good sign. Because with this growth of darkness means there's a wave of revival coming. There's going to be a wave of revival like the world has never seen. And I believe it's going to start in places like this with believers like you. There aren't a whole lot of us, you know. There's a, lot, there's a lot of believers, but there's not a lot of believers like you. Amen. This is one of the reasons for the delay in miracles and healings and deliverance and all those things we are looking for. I've been asking the Lord about that for a while. We see some now and then. 
How many know Linda and I have been in a spiritual challenge for about three years now? Now, it's getting better. It gets a little better every day. But I'm wondering, like, why in the world is this taking so long? Myself, I can understand, but not Linda. Linda's the finest Christian girl I know, I've ever known. A very, very sanctified person. Wouldn't say poop if she was up to her neck in it. So, <laughs> but anyway, I would, <laughs> but she doesn't. So, anyway, the reason that there's delays in what we're praying, the reason why it feels like God is a thousand miles away sometimes, the reason why we get discouraged and disappointed is because there is between us and the throne of God a heavenly evil that's arrayed against us. And that that array is getting larger and stronger every day. See, let me tell you something. Because of the God gave the earth to Adam, all right, then all the sons and daughters of Adam inherit whatever Adam had. And I'm here to say because we own the world, the earth, through Christ, through God, let me say, tell you, it's what we do that determines how much demonic power is released. And the amount of wickedness that is being tolerated now is beyond the pale. There are kids 8 and 10 years old are doing things I didn't even know what they were when I was 8 and 10 years old. And so that kind of activity is what causes demons to unite together and to have a greater power and authority. Not that they have any, they're using ours. Did you hear what I said? They're using ours. And so we have to fight harder than ever before. Are you going to fight? Or are you going to sit down and just let the devil win? You can have it either way you want. Because in the end, God's going to have it his way. And there's nothing anybody can do about it. But whether I'm in it or not, that's up to me. We know that there's a kingdom of darkness and there's a kingdom of light. Amen. <coughs> we know that there's a kingdom of darkness. Even the unsaved are a subject to this spiritual battle. You hear me? Even the unsaved. Why? Because the devil hates them too. He hates all human beings because you're made in God's image. You're a special object of his love. So anything he can do to hurt you hurts God. You hear me? When you get hurt, God it hurts. Now, someday he's going to come and lower the boom. But until then, we're the ones that are responsible to carry the ministry of Jesus forward. Even the unsaved. They don't know they're in it because they can't see it. Because they're in the dark. But we know where we are. We know what we're doing. We can see it. You know, an unsaved person look at the same thing you and I are looking at, and they think it's perfectly okay. <coughs> and I've got the reason for that <coughs> right here. The greatest crisis facing American pastors and church leaders is biblical illiteracy. Mm -hmm. 52% reject absolute moral truth. That's half the people in this country. Don't believe there's a moral absolute. 61% don't read the Bible daily. Now, I know that's none of you, right? 
75% believe people are basically good. No, they're not. No, they're not. They're desperately wicked. <laughs> 60% believe the Bible conflicts with their beliefs. Well, change your beliefs because you're wrong. 54% are unwilling to define human life as sacred. 50% claim the Bible is, is vague on abortion. No, it isn't. For, get this one now. 43% believe Jesus sinned. I was appalled by that. 58% believe the Holy Spirit is a figment of your imagination. Well, see, I, you're cut off from power now. If you don't believe in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, you have nothing to minister with. You have nothing to work with. You have nothing to overcome with. 62% of churchgoers, I don't know what kind of church they're going to, but 62% of churchgoers say it's important to have some kind of faith. No, it's important to have biblical faith. There isn't some kind of faith. <coughs> 50% do not view sex outside of marriage as sinful. 40% do not believe lying is sinful. 48% believe in salvation through works. 43% do not believe in a God-given purpose for humanity. 34% reject marriage as only one man and one woman. Not around here you don't. 36% huh. fail to seek and pursue God's will for their life each day. Now, you want to know why things are in the mess they're in? That's the reason right there. All right? So what are we going to do about it, saints? Hmm? Are you going to fight? If you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, you've heard this verse before, but I want to go over it with a fine-tooth comb. So there can't be any mistaking it. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. Oh, his might. Whoa, wait a minute. That's different. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore. It says stand therefore. Amen. You know, we have a lot that we deal with, but it's nothing like the first century church was born in. You could lose your head for being a care Christian. Amen. So what is spiritual warfare anyway? Spiritual warfare is overcoming the flesh in a demonic opposition sent to prevent us from hearing and obeying God in order to fulfill his will and achieve our destiny. Now, Linda and I were away last week. We were in, uh, what was the name? El, no, we were in uh, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Lots and lots of sand. And uh, we had a nice time there. But Linda and I noticed, and we always do, when we get far enough away from home, it's easier to hear God, to hear his voice, and to respond. And that's because the atmosphere above our head isn't as arrayed against us like it is when you're home. Because believe me, the principalities and powers know we're here. Amen. They know we're here. We get to Las Cruces, they don't know. See, they're not as sharp as they'd like you to think. 
okay? They're not all that brilliant. Amen. We have to be in a place where we operate with God's authorized power and authority. All right? The first thing is to make sure what I'm trying to accomplish is his will in the first place. Only you can answer that question. Only you can answer if the thing you're praying for is God's will in the first place. All right? And then we have to discern the opposition. Discern the opposition. Jesus said in Mark chapter 3, verse 26, And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man, and then he'll plunder his house. All right. So first of all, there are scales of demonic power. Notice what it said in Ephesians. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities. We see this in the 10th and 11th chapter of Daniel where Daniel was on a three-week, no pleasant bread fast in prayer. And the angel came to him with the answer that he was praying for. And the angel told him, the first day you prayed, you were heard. You were heard the first time you were heard. But I had to fight with the prince of Persia. And not only that, he held me up for three weeks. And not only that, I had to call on Michael, the archangel, to come and defeat that prince of Persia so I could come here and give you this message. Now, that was Daniel. Do you think maybe there might be a little bit of a delay in what we're believing for? That maybe there's principalities and powers fighting against us as a church and as believers against powers. Powers operate under principalities. There is a well-marshaled, regulated kingdom of Satan. And he isn't all that sharp. He got that idea from heaven. Because when he was in heaven, God has a as a order, and he has the living uh, creatures. Then there's archangels. Then there's angels, okay? Submission is something you're going to have to do in heaven. So you might as well practice now. Because God insists on submission. <laughs> Amen. Principalities. Then there's powers. There's rulers of the darkness of this age. So there's rulers underneath the powers and principalities. And then there's uh, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That word host there means an army. Okay? There's an army of spiritual wickedness. In heavenly places. Some people say they're going to pray all night. Well, I, I don't. I say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Boom, I'm through. But the answer coming back, I have to stand in faith. Are you listening to me? I have to stand in faith, believing. Daniel stood and believed. For three weeks, he believed. Some of us have been believing three years, 30 years. Here, uh, now, if I spend 30 years, I'm going to ask the Lord, what am I not praying right? Well, when it comes to sickness, disease, it's God's will that you be healed. And if you're praying for that, you don't have to worry about whether it's his will. It's God's will that you be saved. It's God's will that everybody in your family be saved. Are you listening to me? And this is the time 
and season when we have to be about the Father's business. And the Father's business is not health, wealth, and prosperity. The Father's business is getting souls saved, people filled with the Spirit, people growing in the knowledge of God to His glory. That's the Father's business. And if you go about his business, he'll take care of your business. So we have to overcome flesh and the demonic opposition that's been sent to prevent us from fulfilling and achieving our destiny. So in Mark chapter 3, verse 6, 26, we're talking about this is a key that Jesus gave us about spiritual warfare. We must bind the strong man. Are you listening? You have to bind the strong man. Now, I can tell you what the strong man is over my life. I can tell you what the strong man is over this church. The strong man over this church is a scattering spirit. You hear me? I said it's a scattering spirit. It comes when you get to your blessing, it just poof, scatters everywhere. Am I the only one that's experienced that? Amen. You buy a new car and three weeks later you have an accident. You haven't had an accident in 30 years. Amen. So we have to discern who's the strong man. Now, how do we do that? We ask God to reveal it. And if he doesn't reveal it, and he might not, then you proceed on the basis of the word of God. But you bind the opposition. I said you bind the opposition. Can you hear me back there okay? So are you going to bind the opposition? Well, all right then. Now we're getting there somewhere. Amen. See, all I can do is get you to think. But that's a lot. That's a lot if I can get you to think. Think about what's going on around you. Think about what's going on in the world. Think about what is attacking me. What is the problem here? Then there is the opposition because of an open door that my sin has provided. Oh, oh, even the great King David got in a mess of trouble because of Bathsheba. And that deal with Bathsheba, even though he was forgiven and restored, his ministry was never the same as it was before that. Is the opposition because it's my plan, so there's no grace on it. It's difficult to surrender what I want in my plan for what God wants and what's his plan. And the more determined and, and, and insistent we get upon something, that's the something he's going to make you wait for. Do you hear me? I said that's something you're going to have to wait for. Because anything that's more important then God is an idol. Didn't like that too much, some of you. I said, anything that's more important than God is an idol. And he's not going to minister to your idols. Ooh, yes. Is the opposition because it's God's plan but I have to do the warfare to obtain the promise. Now, saints, if we're going to be in a warfare, let's be in the right fight. Let's be in a fr the fight to obtain the promise. Now, we have to understand emotional reactions to this warfare. Victory, listen to me now, victory is usually a process more than instant success. There are disappointment, which is a short-term thing. <clears throat> then there's discouragement. That comes after a long struggle with the same issue. 
and there seems to be no end to it. Discouragement. You know how many discouraged believers there are? Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I send a spirit of deliverance against dis discouragement, disappointment, Father. I break the power of those thoughts. I break the power of that sadness in people's hearts. I break the power of that suggestion that you're not going to go forward. You're not going to make it. You're not going to have your blessing. You're not going to get your man. You're not going to get your woman. <coughs> you're not going to get your job. I take authority over that in the name of Jesus. Satan is deceptive. That's what he does. That's his thing. Some people think that because uh, the devil is out there, if I make a deal with the devil, he won't bother me. And then what happens? Well, all hell breaks out in your, in your backyard. You say, hey, devil, I made a deal with you. He says, yeah, I lied. I'm the devil, remember? Never give the devil a good day. We think things like, what did I do to deserve this? What did I do wrong? This is usually our first thoughts to an evil report. If God was real, I wouldn't be going through this. All I did is what I thought God wanted me to do. Now I'm in a real mess, like David at Keliah. He did exactly what God said, and when he came back, the, the wives and children had been captured, and the village had been burned to the ground, and all their supplies were taken. And the men were, now listen to this, the men were so discouraged, they were talking about stoning David. David, the great king. Yeah, he went through some things. Yeah. Now, how many know you're in trouble when your own congregation wants to stone you? Yeah. We have to do and recognize that the opposition is Satan. Always. Always. Everyone, saved and unsaved faces satanic opposition the unsaved don't know it and he doesn't bother them a lot because he can twist their tail anytime he wants you're the one that's a problem i said you're the one that's a problem well maybe on this side they're not a problem over here you guys are a problem amen do you guys want to be a problem to the devil all right, hallelujah, <laughs> yeah, amen. You're not going to know or understand what is going on in the spirit realm. There are things called a satanic assignment. Are you listening? That'll come against you, your marriage, your home, your business and your church. Amen. The devil doesn't bother who it isn't a threat to him. You become a threat to him, saints, you have to be aware that there is a battle coming. And that's the main reason a lot of believers don't want to witness, don't want to do deliverance, don't want to pray for the sick. You're a threat into the devil's kingdom. Amen. We will always have an enemy. We were born into a sin-fallen world. The opposition's going to be there. Not every battle is our choice because sometimes it's sent to us. But winning is always our choice. You will never outgrow warfare. You simply have to learn to fight. Every blessing Linda and I have came at a price. 
That way we appreciate and protect what he has done for us. If it costs nothing, it's worth nothing. God's purpose in warfare is your education and place of revelation and an opportunity to grow, not just survive. Nothing is ever as bad as it first appears. You cannot fail without your permission. Did you, I want you to write that down. I cannot fail without my permission. Amen. Nothing is ever as bad as it first appears. You will never win a spiritual battle with reasoning. Why did this happen? I don't know. It's here. I don't feel good or I have a problem. I don't know where it came from. I don't know why if it's a if I can review my own decisions in life and see if I did something to open a door, and if I did, repent and close the door. But sometimes you just get attacked because of who you are and what you have. Amen. You'll never know everything that's going on in the spirit world. You have to trust God. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Yeah, we have to pull down strongholds. That's why prayer meetings are so important. That's why having groups are so important. I don't go against strongholds and principalities without a lot of help. You hear what I'm saying? There's levels of anointing in the satanic kingdom, satanic anointing. There's levels of anointing in the kingdom of God. Some have more than others. I'll tell you right now, when Apostle Des is here, I know she's got more anointing than I do. And she's got more authority than I do. Well, I'm not jealous. I want to get more. I want to get what she's got. Amen. I want to be able to preach like Leon does. You know? Amen. The real enemy is always Satan. All opposition comes from the devil, always. He uses flesh and an unrenewed mind and sometimes other people. You know, there are people sometimes where you work, where you go to school, the de if they're unsaved, the devil can stir them up. Yes, he can. And here's, a, here's one that'll take you by surprise. Your greatest opposition can be those from within your own household. Hmm? Let me tell you, when I decided to go into the ministry, I wasn't getting a lot of encouragement from anybody. Huh? The first 10 years, well, it's never been a lot of fun. It's been fulfilling but not fun. Amen. Revelation 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, O heaven, heavens, plural, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. How would you like to get up every morning with the personal prophecy the devil has? The smoke of your torment is going to go up forever and ever. Oh, dear God, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that's not us. <clears throat> God wants us to grow as we go through things. Most of the time, there's not an instant removal of the problem. You know this verse. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Your problem is, try, is making, trying to make you think he's not faithful. <coughs> How can he be faithful when Linda's so sick? 
How can he be faithful and I almost died from a heart attack? How can he be faithful and I almost died again from a, what was that thing, Linda? At Belvoir, the colon, colon cancer. Yeah. No I'm temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. It's a common thing. There isn't, the devil can't tempt you with something he knows from the spirit realm. All right? He can't come up with some spiritual trick that you've never seen before. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. So if you're being tempted or tested with something, know that you are able. You are able. Say that with me. I am able to overcome all testing. Amen. We'll also make the way of escape. The way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Notice he the, he's going to provide a way for you to get out of it. He's going to provide a way of escape that you may bear it. Now that tells me I may have to go through it. Huh? Yeah, somebody, well, you know, he'll make a way of escape. That way of escape does not mean you're not going to have to go through it. It means you won't be tempted or tested with anything you can't handle. And some of you can handle a lot. I know you can. I know what you're going through. I know if you're going through all that, you can handle a lot. You're a spiritual giant. Hallelujah. And the devil's got you thinking you're some little insignificant little defeated peewee that can't do anything. <laughs> Kick the devil in the butt. That's what you're going to do. Amen. We're going to demand that we have our covenant rights that Jesus paid for. We're going to demand that the promise of God come to pass in our life. Whether it's three minutes, three days, three weeks, three years, we are going to have it. Because having done all to stand, stand there for. That doesn't mean move. I'm not going to move. The devil's going to move. <coughs> Your enemy's ability to tempt is limited. But God's promise is a way of escape. No one has been as big a loser for as long as Satan has. He's never won yet, not one time. And this is his characteristics. He's a liar and the father of it. The devil speaks to you, there's a 100% chance that he's lying. <laughs> he's the accuser of the brethren. He accuses you to God and God to you. He's the God of this age, this age of darkness. He's the prince of the power of the air. And these are his three main goals. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come, Jesus, I have come, that you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. Amen. There's abundant life in Christ. Even if you die, you still abide in abundant life. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd rather abide in abundant life than abundant death. Amen. These are five common weapons of the devil. Delays. The goal of a delay is to get us to give up and start doing things our way. Nothing could trip you up faster in the middle of a spiritual battle to decide you're going to do it your way. Oh, boy. <laughs> Man. Deceit. All experiences in the natural must be judged by the truth of the word. Truth triumphs over facts. Distractions. Making something else look more important or easier than the will of God. And it's to break your focus. 
disappointment comes at the early stage of the battle, many never get past this point. There are many disappointments on the path to victory. Did you hear me? There are many disappointments on the way to victory. And then the fifth is de denial. Ignoring the problem or always putting the effort to overcome it off till tomorrow. It's not unspiritual to have a plan. It just takes a plan that God can direct. Sooner or later, the problem's going to come home to roost. And it will be even more difficult to deal with then. Now, these are five effective weapons that we must use. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, be diligent. What does diligent mean? What does diligent mean? Just keep at it, right? Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We must know and speak the word of God. Your conversation must be that of an overcomer. Speak what the Bible says, not the problem. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You must take authority over Satan in the name of Jesus. Have you taken authority over Satan in the name of Jesus? Some of you have. How about the rest of you? How about over here? Have you okay, how about up front here? Have you? Okay, well, that's most of you. There's a couple that... I don't know what you're doing, but anyway. Hmm. The, Lord, the name of the Lord, which is Jesus, is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Run to Jesus. When you sin, run to Jesus. He's the only one that can help you, and he's willing to. You must be a person of prayer and fasting. James 5.16, confess your trespasses to one another. But to one another. Amen. Amen. That says to one another. I, I want us to focus on that. We have to, have to confess our trespasses to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. Now, there is an answer to healing. Are you listening? Amen. Confessing trespass to the person I offended. And praying for them and one another. Are you praying in the midst of your trial? Two of you are. Are you praying in the midst of your trial? Are you praying for other people? Or are you just sitting there feeling sorry for yourself? Well, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't, but you don't know what I went through either. Uh, did you? Amen. Amen. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, when I used to read that, I used to think to myself, boy, if I could be one of these righteous men, my prayers could avail much. And then finally it dawned on me, you know, like, bong, lights on. <laughs> You're righteous in Christ. You are a righteous man. You are a righteous woman. Your prayers avail much. Hallelujah. I said, can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. And here, here's a big one. You're just going to be thrilled. You're going to be dancing in the aisles to hear this one. You must seek and use the wisdom of the spiritual leaders God has placed in your life. Did you hear what I said? You have to seek the wisdom of the spiritual leaders that you have, that God has put in your life. 1 Corinthians 4.15 for though you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. 
For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. I wonder what it was like to have Paul as your spiritual father. Man, oh man. Glory to God. Listen, no one else can fight your battle for you. No one. Linda can't fight my battle for me. She can help, but she can't fight the battle for me. Nobody else can feel your pain. Nobody else can make the decision for you to stand. And having done all to stand, I'm going to stand. Therefore, I know the wickedness in the heavenly places is greater and stronger than it's ever been. I also know I'm going to be stronger than I've ever been. You know, when they play the University of Alabama, every school says, today we got to bring our A game because they're playing Alabama. I'm here to tell you, saints, today is the day to start bringing your A game. You hear me? Bring your A game. Be in football practice every day. Sharpen your A game. Christians go to practice with their word of God and apply what they read. Amen. These are five things, and I'm going to end with this. And all the people said, amen. These are five things that will shorten your waiting time to a breakthrough. 1 John 4, 4 through 6, you are our God, little children. Who are you of? Oh, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. In the world, they are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. Who are you of? Oh, we are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of er error. Five things that will shorten your waiting time to your miracle. Your words. Your words. If you don't like what you see, change what you say. Your obedience to the last instruction God gave you. However small and insignificant it might seem, have you been obedient to the last instruction God gave you? Your worship. Will you praise me anyway? You're giving, and not just money. <coughs> there are people who are just lonely. That didn't go over big over here. I'll go over here. There are people who are lonely. The greatest thing you could do for them is to spend some time with them. Please, please, call somebody on the phone with a word of encouragement, not gossip. Well, we're just here to be intercessors. No, you're here to gossip. Shut up. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Your witness. Or am I witnessing to the lost? My declaring the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel is the power of God. You don't have to look any further for it. Stop looking at what you can see and start believing what you can have. All great saints have failed. The overcomers get up. Satan always attacks the thing he fears the most. And he's afraid of you. Your struggle, struggles are merely the path to a miracle. Fighting will not stop until Jesus comes. Everything good is hated by everything evil. You can discern evil by its reaction to truth and those who teach it. Linda and I were in a bookstore the other day, and they have a coffee shop in the back, which is just the... Best of both worlds, a cup of coffee and something to read. Praise God, I love it. 
I'm not, I'm not weird. I'm telling you that. I just like that. And we, <laughs> we, we sit back here, and somebody called me. I forget who. We started praying on the phone. This guy next to me couldn't get out of there fast enough. I mean, you would have thought his pants were on fire. Amen. I started witnessing to somebody in line. Amen. The two people behind me decided they didn't need coffee anymore. Amen. You want to do something the next time you're out at a restaurant? Put your Bible out on the table and see what kind of reaction you get. Amen. Yeah, I do that on purpose sometimes. Now, you know, the waitress can't get away from you. She has to wait on you. So I have a captive audience, you might say. Amen. You can discern evil by the reaction it gets. Satan can not stop you. Listen to this and remember it. Satan cannot stop you unless he can convince you that he can. Amen. Father, I just thank you for revelation. Lord, we understand now, we understand that there is a spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places that's growing exponentially because of the activity in our own country. And we know, we know we have to stand. Lord, I ask you to put a, a, a spine of steel down the back of everyone's back that we're going to stand. And having done all to stand, we're going to stand till we see the miracle, till we see the breakthrough, till we see the answers to our prayers. And Lord, we know you're faithful. <coughs> we know you hear us. Now, right now, I'd like to ask our worship leader and our singers to come up. We're going to sing that first song that we sung today, Victory. Amen. We're going to sing. I'm not going to sing. I know some of you are praying against that. Amen. We'll wait for our worship team. Amen. Now, this time, enter in like it's true. Amen. You can stand and clap. Hearts rejoicing, breaking silence. You are my God alone. Time to stand on your word with passion. Heaven's our home. I can't stop giving you praise. Your fame will last forever. And I won't stop living for your name. Declaring your praise. Oh, you're my victory. Reason why I sing everything I need. There's no other name that deserves all praise. You're my victory. Oh, my victory. It's in you, Jesus. You're my victory. My life transformed in your holy presence. Given to your call alone. Oh, my shame is buried. My shame is buried. I live in freedom. My God has and won. And I can you praise, you praise. Your fame will last forever, and I won't stop living for your name. Declaring your praise, oh, you're my victory. Reason why I sing everything I need. Oh, there's no other name than you, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, praise, you're my victory. You're my victory. 
there's nothing I want more to see you high and lifted up. There's nothing more powerful. Your name, your name, your name, your name. There's nothing, there's nothing I want more. I want to see, to see you high and lifted up. There's nothing more powerful. You, Jesus, your name, you, Jesus, your name. You're my victory, reason why I see everything I need. There's no other name that deserves all praise. You're my victory. Anybody hear me? All right. Amen. Amen. You can all, all be seated. Amen. Praise God. All right. We have any uh, first-time visitors here today? Anybody first time? Okay. Just one person for the first time. Okay. All right, sir. Let me uh, just, just pray for you. Okay. Amen. Are you, you recording, Amber? All right. Very good. And we got a backup back there, hopefully. Amen. And if there's any prayer requests on chat or whatever, please go ahead and bring those up. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we just stir the apostolic prophetic in Jesus' name. And, Father, we just thank you for this uh, gentleman. For the Lord says even uh, even uh, in, in this uh, season of time, the Lord says, I'm going to stir you afresh and anew, says God. And the, and the Lord says that you've known me for many years, but the Lord says that there's a whole new dimension of my spirit that I desire to even uh, bring, uh, bring upon you, says the Lord. And I, sir, I just see you with the Bible and that you're just kind of leaning over the Bible and you're reading the Bible and you are praying. And God says that there is a sweet communion be between you and him. And the Lord says he wants to make that even sweeter. Amen. And God says that even in this season, he's going to even put a fresh uh, an anointing up upon you. There's a, there's a refreshing that's, go that's going to come upon you. It's going to strengthen you physically. Amen. And the Lord says that there's e even an emotional strength that he's bringing to you. You've seen a lot of devastation in your, in your lifetime. You've seen, uh, there's been a lot of disappointment that you, you have personally, you know, experienced and also your, your family. But the Lord says that I'm going to heal you from some of those things in, in this season. I just got the word trauma. Father, we bind trauma right now in Jesus' name. There have been traumatic, you know, events uh, that you've even been a part of and you've seen and, and heard that have influenced your uh, life. And the Lord says that I'm going to heal you from some of those memories also, says the, says the Lord. Some things that have bothered you even years ago. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just break the power of those traumatic events and those memories right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we just loosen anointing upon them right now in Jesus' name. 
And Amber, we, we just re release a healing upon your physical body uh, right now. If you would come up, please, so I can touch you. Amen. Father, we just thank you uh, right now. And Angelita, why don't you come also? There is an emotional healing. Amen. Amen. So, Father, just, uh, I, I tell you what, just uh, sit just in case there is a, amen. I don't want anybody getting hurt today. Amen. So Or any day. <laughs> amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release an anointing upon you right now for all these physical problems that are going on. We cease. I just command them to cease right now in the name of Jesus. I break the power. And this has been traumatic for you. And we break the power of that trauma right now in Jesus' name. And we command it to go in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I just thank you right now for healing. Amen. Healing is the children's bread. And, Father, we just claim healing right now throughout your entire body in Jesus' name. And also from that emotional stress, we break it right now in Jesus' name. And there's just been a general weariness. It's just like one thing right after the other. And, Father, we just break that right now in Jesus' name. And even witchcraft has come against you from various places. And we break the power of that right now in Jesus' name. And um, Amber, I just want you to repeat this after me, Lord Jesus. I repent and I renounce any type of witchcraft that has um, <laughs> invaded my home in any kind of way or my life. I repent of it right now. I renounce it and I command it to go right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, we just seal that word right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, we, we just declare a, a reversal upon our life right now, a reversal in the name of Jesus of all these negative effects in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Amber, I, I'm not sensing it's anything personal, but sometimes there have been people that have been around you, amen, that have released things, you know, upon you. Amen. So just continue to be very careful. Amen. Amen. All right. And, Angelita, uh, the uh, Lord says that, that he's healing you from some emotional uh, scarring, and that's been very traumatic for you. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bind this trauma right now and all of this emotional scarring in the name of Jesus. We just rebuke it right now, and we just command a healing upon you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Father, for healing, Father. Amen. In her soulish realm, Lord, in the emotional realm right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, we just thank you for a strength to be upon her, Father, especially in this season, a strength. Amen. And a, a determination to complete the action. Do not become weary in well-doing. You're on the right path. And so, Father, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Does anybody else need healing um, from an emotional standpoint? Amen. All right. So you've been traumatized by something. Okay. Something has really hurt you on the inside. Okay. In your soulish realm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Come on, Matt. Anybody else, okay, um, there's been, uh, there's been d uh, d divorce, there's been people stole from you, please sit, Matt, okay, thanks, uh, people stole from you, something happened, you know, emotionally, okay, that has really, you know, upset you, okay, it doesn't matter what it is, just come on up and sit, and I'll, and I'll pray over you. Jesus, we just rebuke this trauma. That Amen. Father, I just break the power of that right now. Even, uh, even vestiges of PTSD, we bind it right now in the name of Jesus. Even these memories of the incident right now, we just command a healing right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord says to you, Matt, that he did protect you, and he will continue to, pr to protect you. Claim Psalm 91. Look at Psalm 91 and claim that. Amen. And what I mean by claim it is repeat it and say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in accordance with Psalm 91, amen, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life, and you are protecting me in Jesus' name. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you for that protection, Father. And we bind that trauma now from this event, and we command it out, out right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, I even ask you, Lord, to replace it with a good memory, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. And we thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Father, we just thank you right now for healing. Uh, Father, we just come against any traumatic event uh, that has happened in her life in the name of Jesus. And Father, we break the power of those memories, those bad memories from even years ago, from things taking place. And Father, we break it right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we just command a healing upon her mind, her will, and her emotions in Jesus' name. Even the healing of memories right now in Jesus' name. And Father, any PTSD vestiges, we just break the power of that right now. And we command it to go in Jesus' name. And Father, we just thank you for releasing the joy of her salvation. Amen. Father, release the joy. Restore it. Restore the joy of her salvation, Father, through you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Lord. And we say all is well. All is well in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, Father, we just thank you, Father. Uh, Lord, we just bind this trauma right now through these relationship issues in the name of Jesus, and we break the power of it right now in Jesus' name, and we just command a healing upon her in the name of Jesus, of her mind, her will, and her emotions in Jesus' name. Father, again, we just break this PTSD vestige right now in the name of Jesus, and Father, we just release a healing even of her memories in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of trauma. Father, we just, we just bind this trauma right now in Jesus' name. And these memories, you're still getting flashbacks of various things. Yeah, that's, that's, that's PTSD. And so, Father, we just break the power of the PTSD and those flashbacks right now in the name of Jesus and all that's being sent to torment you to, to keep you held back in, in previous, yeah, in things that have happened to you even years ago. And so, Father, we break the power of those um, memories, Father, right now, those negative memories in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we just declare a healing over her right now, her mind, her will, and her emotions. Father, thank you for healing her memories right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, for a refreshing to be upon her right now, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, yes, ma'am, thank you. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just come against the grief and the sorrow, Father, even from the events of days gone by and the relationships, Father, in the name of Jesus where the enemy has, has come against her. Father, we break the power of these assignments and these tactics by the enemy in the name of Jesus. And, Father, all the trauma that it has caused, Father, we bind it right now in Jesus' name, and we command it off of her in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we just release a healing right now. In the name of Jesus, even over the memories, Father, in Jesus' name. And, Father, we take authority over these assignments, Father, of cutting her off from various people and things, Father, and trying to destroy her reputation. And we break the power of that right now in Jesus' name. And we, we declare a reversal upon her right now in the name of Jesus, Father. And, Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Okay. All right. Praise God. All right. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We got some prayer requests here. Amen. And so that's to help me out here. Praise God. We got prayer requests. All right. Thank you, Lord. That's good word, huh? Okay, this is a prayer from Chesna 
Tessna Hale. We, Lord, we pray for her emotional healing in every area of hurt, pain, and trauma. Lord, we just take authority over those memories of the past. And Lord, she may remember them, but she won't be hurt by them anymore in Jesus' name. And what is that? Oh, okay. Kasia Engel. Lord, we pray for emotional healing for Kasia, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh huh. Uh, for Jam. I uh, want more w with my supervisor and, and colleagues. Her new job is going well. Father, we thank you for the new job that's going so well. And we pray, we request for more, it doesn't say more what, but more success with my supervisor and colleagues. Thank you, Lord. And this is Shalina. Amen. Prayer for family members dealing with COVID. Father, in the name of Jesus, anybody else dealing with uh, COVID in, in their family or um, symptoms or whatever, amen, just ra raise your hand or stand up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come against all these COVID symptoms right now in the name of Jesus for Shalina and, and all of her family, Father. Lord, we break the power of these disease and inflictions, Father, in the name of Jesus, these sicknesses, Father, we come against them with the blood of the Lamb. And, Father, we just thank you, Father. Amen. For the word of God says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. For June, she wants restoration in her body. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just command, uh, we declare, and we release restoration to June right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord. Amen. For Mr. and Mrs. Morrison, uh, healing and health. Amen. Strength. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, even from chemo treatment, Father, we just ask for healing right now. Yes, God, from any uh, vestiges of cancer in, in their bodies, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we just lift them up right now, Lord, and we, we, we just declare strength over them in the name of Jesus, strength in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we just thank you. Amen. We, we thank you. Those are all done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are we recording back there? Huh? I can't hear you. Are you recording? Okay, this lady in the yellow blouse right here that's looking down, Father, I just pray for her right now. What's your first name? What is it? Lenny? Glennis. Okay, Glennis. Glennis, we just bless you with the hope of the Lord. I come against the discouragement. I come against that defeat. I come against that fear. In fact, this place has been a little fearful for you. You've never seen it quite like this before. And God says to be at peace. You're in the right place at the right time getting the right word. And the Lord says he's going to release to you a deeper appreciation for the word of God and a pursuit of the Lord Jesus. We bless her with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Pain in legs. Pain in legs. Anybody? Come on up. Sit and sit on the front row there. Amen. Pain in legs. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just command a healing right now upon our leg, Father. In the name of Jesus, I just come against any type of blockage, Father, and I just uh, de declare right now, amen, there'll be uh, the be unrestricted blood flow in the name of Jesus and any nerves that have been damaged or pinched. Uh, we just declare right now that they'll be uh, loosened in the name of Jesus. And uh, again, all the blood is going to be flowing normally in Jesus' name. There'll be no more pain, no more blockages right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just command a healing right now on our left leg in the name of Jesus. Father, even the uh, lower back, we just command a healing. In Jesus' name, we break the power of that pain. And even for shingles, we break it right now. We command that disease off of her right now in Jesus' name. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. And Father, we just thank you and we just praise you, Father. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Praise God. All right. Anybody in the sanctuary that have a, uh, do you have a, a prayer, prayer request? Amen. We didn't want to leave, leave you out. If anybody has a prayer, prayer request, speak up and we'll pray for you right now. All right. Looks like we got a couple more coming or something. Amen. Thanks, Davina. Okay. Amen. All right. All right. Uh, prophetic. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let's see. Amen. All right. Pray for full. All right. This is for uh, La Latoya. Prayer for full restoration. Yeah. Right. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, for everything that she has lost, Father. Lord, your word says, amen, when the thief is found out, he has to restore sevenfold. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just we just declare restoration for Latoya right now in Jesus' name. And for Ruth James, Father, we just pray for direction in ministry, Father, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we just uh, declare even, um, even a wisdom to be upon her, Father, wisdom in Jesus' name. If any man lack wisdom, Father, you said you would give liberally. So, Father, we just... Release a wisdom, Father, for direction and ministry and, and the type of ministry. Amen. And even location in Jesus' name. And, Father, so we thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So this is for Pat Zula. Okay, for Pat. Amen. Uh, for the Lord says, daughter, uh, surely I'm moving you up. And God says, even as I've been moving you up in the anointing, there have been several new attacks that have come against you. And the Lord says, but I am even causing a greater faith to grow on the inside of you. And so the Lord says, even as you heard the word today, you must stand. And the Lord says, you must continue to fight. I've even created you to be a fighter, says God. You've been created to be a warrior, says the, says the Lord. You're not created to be one who gives up. And so the Lord says, even now I'm going to strengthen you in the name of Jesus. I'm going to strengthen you in the inner man. And so the Lord says, continue to stand. Continue to stand. And haven't done all to stand. And the Lord says, I am pleased with you, that you have hung in there. You have kept going. You have not quit. Amen. Praise God. Don't be weary in well-doing, says, says God. Keep going, says, says the Lord. I'm going to give you the strength to, to do it. Amen. So, Father, we just released a strength upon Pat right now in the name of Jesus. And, Father, I thank you, Lord, that she will not be weary in well-doing in Jesus' name. Amen. And, Father, we just lose a strengthening upon a whole congregation now in Jesus' name. There's been a lot of people who have come under attack, different types of, of things. And you, you've heard why. <laughs> Amen. And we're all growing in faith. Amen. We're all growing in the gift of faith. We're growing in all the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. All of you are going to be used in miracles. All of you. Amen. If you're under the anointing of this church, you're going to be used in miracles. You're going to be used in all the gifts. Amen. Believe it. It's going to happen. Amen. And so having done all, you must stand. Amen. You must believe the word of God, claim the word of God, do the word of God. That's our only hope. Our only hope is Jesus. Amen. The weapon of our warfare is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It's mighty through God. Okay. It might seem like there's a delay. Okay. It might seem that way. But God has a reason for everything. And it's ultimately for our benefit. Okay. Remember, all the negative stuff comes from the devil, not from God. But God is the one who takes us through. Amen. He'll take us through to the, only, to the other side, but you can't give up. Amen. So if you all would stand, please. Amen. I'm just going to loose upon you a strengthening in the inner man. I want you to put your hand over your belly area. Out of our belly will flow rivers of living water. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release a strengthening right now to every person here. In Jesus' name, every person will be strengthened. Everyone on Facebook and YouTube, be strengthened. In the name of Jesus, be strengthened. You'll not give up, but you'll keep going in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you right now. Yes, God, that there'll be, amen, that there'll be sowers of, of your word, Father. Amen. That, Lord, they'll be bold in the name of Jesus. That when they come into contact with people, that they'll share their testimony. They'll share the gospel. Amen. In the name of Jesus. And, Father, we just release a refreshing on every person, a refreshing right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, even those that have not come up, that have medical issues or issues that they didn't want to verbalize, Father, you know what they are. And so, Father, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Father, to heal them, Father, in the name of Jesus. We bind trauma in any form, and we command it out right now in Jesus' name. And, Father, we just thank you for healing memories today 
in Jesus' name, for healing physical bodies, for, feeling, uh, for healing the emotional realm. Amen, in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you now, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can be, be seated. And we'll turn it over to Andrea. Go ahead, Andrea. Amen, amen. Give the Lord a praise. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you all your announcements, um, and then Sean, Pastor Sean will close us out. Um, so we have coming up on September the 10th, I believe that's fr on Saturday, September the 10th, is our next Military Mountain. So that will be, amen, thank you. <laughs> That will be from 2 to 4 p.m. That's a Saturday here at the church. It will be live streamed as well. And it will be focused on PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and traumatic brain injuries. So uh, it's for everyone. So if, you know, you're military, non-military, you support military, no military, uh, all. <laughs> Just come on out and support. Amen. And then we also have coming up um, on the 24th. That's, I'm sorry, 